Good morning, Magic. I'm Gavin Verhey from Wizards of the Coast, and this past weekend was MagicCon Philadelphia, and with it, one of the most unusual events I've ever run. It was called the Unknown Event. People signed up for a big mystery. There was one Friday and one Saturday, with the Saturday one benefiting Black Girls Code, an awesome charity with a whopping 350 people in that event. What was it gonna be? Well, here's the deal. It was the battle of Mirans versus the Phyrexians. Here's how it worked. People were assigned a team and built a sealed deck using mystery boosters and Phyrexia all will be one to fight for their team. Over the course of three rounds, the accumulated points that were put on a scoreboard, three per match win. So you had Mirans fighting Phyrexians and points being accumulated. It was awesome, but that wasn't quite enough. In addition to their regular card pool, there was a bit of a Gavin twist. They got a handful of very special playtest cards. I designed all of these just for this weekend in the vein of the original Mystery Booster playtest cards. Think of it as a group of Mystery Booster playtest cards, but set on the plane of New Phyrexia, like a mini expansion. This was really the full R&D experience. These were literally printed out at Wizards of the Coast headquarters, and then a group of us, myself included, hand stickered them onto cards. It was inspired by some of Mark Rosewater's old invitational events, where players got stickered cards they had to evaluate right there. And I even talked with Mark about how designing those was, so I could take those notes forward into designing these. There are 62 cards in total, and they're full of references all over the map. And today I'm going to show you all of these cards, then fill you in on the references behind them. It's a behind the scenes look at some wild magic cards you'll only see here. Ready? Let's go. Okay. So let's kick it off just going through the cards in color order, starting with white. First of all, here's how to read one of these cards. The mana cost is in the top right hand corner. W is white, U is blue, B is black, R is red, G is green, and C is colorless. Any T's you see is the tap symbol. There are two pieces of information underneath them that are irrelevant, just some internal file building stuff. All right, now this card, Unclaimed Cat. One of the things I knew I could do right off the bat were some cards that cared about which team you were on. So I made at least one per color. This unclaimed cycle resulted in Unclaimed Cat. It switches between lifelink and toxic, depending on which side you're on. I'll note that a three mana three three with upside is a pretty good rate here, but on average, I tended to aim these cards on the slightly stronger side for limited. After all, if these are the only places you'll ever be able to play them, I at least wanted some of them to make your deck. Another good representative of the wackiness here is Incisor Steed. This does the mystery booster thing of mashing up mechanics. It takes corrupted and metalcraft and smushes them together into the silly corrupted metalcraft idea. For those into deep references, the name is a mashup of Incisor Glider and Chrome Steed. Bonus points if you caught that. Up next is Good Knight. I might as well bring up Bad Knight here too. Given the warring factions, it made a lot of sense to make a mirrored pair here, much like White and Black Knight of old. One other really unique bit of design space cards can do here is score you points for your team. And while it's not really worth a card on its own, given it is no outcome on the actual bearing of the match, I thought it made for a fun rider. Next is Rosewater's Nemesis, named as such because it has protection from Phyrexians and poison tolerance, a mechanic I made up for this set. Actually, I remember seeing somebody internally talk about this, maybe way back in vision design for Phyrexia All Will Be One. Well, I stole it and put it here. And Mark loves Phyrexians and loves poison, so it's his nemesis. I wanted to create a little slower format than All Will Be One, and so giving a little bit of poison resistance seemed like a good idea. I didn't take away any poison counters, that's part of the principles of poison, but this can delay it a bit. There's one poison tolerance card in each color, plus colorless. But be afraid, you can blow it up and set things right back to normal. One more fun fact, it's a monkey because Mark hates bananas. Little in joke there. Echoing Echo is a reference to the Echo cards in Darksteel. And what better to Echo than the Echo mechanic itself? Leeches is iconic an ancient card that does mess with poison. So rather than make a new card that takes away poison, how about a card that gives you a copy of it? Much like how Mystery Booster has Time Sidewalk that puts them into your deck. Bonus points, it's a leech. And that's where Leech Medic came from. A much loved card from the original Mirrodin block was Death Cloud. So how about a Life Cloud to do exactly the inverse? Crux of Mirrodin is a play on Crux of Fate. I always loved how that card told the story, so I thought I'd bring it here with a little city in the bottle twist. Drake with Set's mechanic is of course the much aware weighted follow-up to bear with Set's mechanic from Mystery Booster, a play on the three mana 2-2 flyer we often do. It is, well, pretty much exactly what it sounds like. Unclaimed Bird is a blue Team Matters card. I tried to find some effects that were great mirrors, and here's one of them. You either proliferate or deliferate? 
something like that. Continuing the extra point cycle is point to the scoreboard. This and other cards like it exile, so nobody felt like they should build a deck that just kept looping these over and over again to get points. Phyrexia Limited is kind of fast, so I wanted some cards to slow it down, and a play on Select for Inspection seemed like a fine card to use. One of my personal favorites is more of that strange oil. It's a play on the flavor text of Steady Progress. Man, that dude was wrong. Either you can take the same path as him, or recognize the danger and counter it. Tricky Mage is a play on mages, like Trinket, Treasure, and Trophy. It seemed like something fun to do from a team perspective, so I made this riff. Mem Narchitect was top down from the name. I came up with it, smiled, and thought I should make a card. It's sort of like a riff on Memnarch, of course, and Grand Architect. This apparently really doesn't work in the rules, but hey, it's Mystery Booster. Phyrexian Broodstar is one of a few cards that are just, hey, this memorable creature from Mirrodin got Phyrexianized. What would a Phyrexian Broodstar do? Affinity for for Phyrexians, of course. I wanted to do an Intwine card, and more than two mode Intwine cards always tickled me. So here's Untap, Upkeep, Draw, something which perfectly has three modes. This card doesn't really work like how you think it does, because as written and per the rules, you would actually take the steps here, Draw, Upkeep, Untap. The last one written is the first one you do. But once again, uh, Mystery Boosters. Unclaimed Blessing is a black way to care about what team you're on, a really versatile trick that both teams could be compelled to play. Long-term Phyresis study is our black poison tall Tolerance card. It's Recover, plus a bit of Poison Protection. I wanted these to make decks, and Recover is a card I generally play. So. Here you go. Nim Mongoose is a play on Nimble Mongoose, all the way down to the Shroud, combined with the Mini Nim from Original Mirrodin that get plus one plus zero oh for each artifact you control. I didn't think it would get played at 1-1, so I made it a classic black 2-1-for-1 one one that enters tapped to compensate. Phyrexian Chimney Imp is the Phyrexianized version of the truly horrible Chimney Imp, and the Phyrexians have taken something unplayable and made it surprisingly playable. Putting two cards on top of your opponent's library is no joke. After making Crux of Mirrodin, I thought it could be fun to do another one that called out sets. And because the format was split mystery booster and all will be one, this is a card that will have targets, but certainly not everything. Good ol' Argentum. Old way Phyrexian is for all the people who wanted Infect instead of Toxic. You get to do that, and it's pretty strong to convert them all over, so this is quite the powerhouse. Hitetsugu's Poison Right is a play on Hitetsugu's Second Right, a card which I've always loved. I only saw this go off a couple times successfully, but it was a delight when it did. Join the winning team is the Red Extra Point card, a little active treason upgrade that can also grab Planeswalkers and Equipment. One of my favorite plays I saw was someone casting this on a Precursor Golem. Three points, please. Phyrexian Esthetician brings the idea of Oil Scavenge. It's Scavenge, but for oil counters. Help turbocharge your all will be one creatures this way. Burn the Phyresis is your red Poison Tolerance card. I figured white and red should have some pretty appealing Poison Tolerance cards given they're the colors of the Mirren Resistance. Unclaimed Battle Axe is one of the first cards I came up with for the Team Matters dynamic, and really was a design that tells the story well. Mirrens get for Mirrodin, and Phyrexians get living weapon. Perfect. I thought doing one color shifted card would be cool, so that's where Red Priest of Yogmoth came from. Straightforward. Furnace Oriflame is another Team Matters card, a play on the classic Orcish Oriflame, a simple team design that was decently likely to make your deck. How does Red want to interact with points? By putting them on the line. Snap Sail Rider doubles the winner's points for their team. My first design doubled it each time, but then I didn't want anybody sitting there and just recasting it like five or six times to get a ridiculous number of points. Six it was. Hound of Urabrask, accidentally not a dog, oops, is a play on Hound of Gristlebrand. Oil meets Undying. Sounds like something the Phyrexians would do. Naturalize the Phyresis is the green one in this cycle. Normally, I'd give green a higher number for something that resembles life gain, but hey, green is so heavy into poison and all will be one, it just felt weird. Unclaimed Tanadon is a reference to Thundering Tanadon from New Phyrexia. Would you rather have a flat one less to cast, or a five mana 8-6 that costs you four life? Take the high ground is greens, one of these point getters. Smash their creature, get a point, what's not to like? Arcbound Mamba came from me thinking thinking about what a Phyrexianized modular creature might look like, given that mechanic was in Darksteel. This card was quite strong with Proliferate, since it lets you essentially double dip on Poison. Bringer of Green Zenith's Twilight, a name so long it didn't fit on the card, is a mashup of the Bringers, Zeniths, and Twilight spells, and maybe even the Beacons, too. You can go for the Wooburg Dream, but a 7 mana 12-12 should be plenty to get the job done. Locust Cobra is a play on Lotus Cobra. This one came entirely name first, and plays with both Locuses and 
different spheres, so you actually can upgrade it in limited. Pulse of the Hunter Maze is a throwback to the pulses from Darksteel. What if there was a poison pulse, like Pulse of the Forge was, for damage? Well, you get this. The epic war of Mirans versus Phyrexians. Who's going to win? Colossal Dreadmaw, of course. This card was actually called then Dreadmaws ate everyone, but it printed out without the everyone, and it didn't go back and change the name because I thought it was arguably even funnier. Have fun making a bunch of Dreadmaws. Okay, Forest Folk, here's a callback. You all know Solemn Simulacrum, right? Well, Forest Folk is the original design Jens Thorin turned in for his invitational card that would become Solemn. I thought it would be a cool throwback to put his original Mirrodin submission here. Phyrexian Ornithopter gets the distinguished honor of being the only card with flavor text. You need to give this some power to hit, but then it's a one mana toxic creature. I saw someone curve this into Unctus's Retrofitter. Wowza. Sojourner's Enforcer Might is a reference back to Frogmite, Mirror Enforcer, and Sojourner's Companion. And while Affinity for Affinity wasn't likely to come up that much here, Affinity Cycling definitely is, with the Affinity cards running around in the All Will Be One main set. Malira Snacks is the colorless Poison Tolerance card. It's like the Golden Egg of Poison Tolerance. Plus three poison is a lot, so this innocuous card actually did pretty great for people. Completed Clone Shell is a variant on Clone Shell, but this time, since it's Mystery Booster, we look at your sideboard. Hopefully, there's some good stuff in there. Sawtooth Avenger is a mashup of Sawtooth Thrasher and Lunar Avenger. Two cards I'm sure you know, and three keywords that didn't exist as named keywords at the time Fifth Dawn came out. Mega Sunburst rounds it all out, doubling your Sunburst and giving it the Megamorph naming treatment. Okay, original Skull Clamp. The story goes that originally Skull Clamp gave plus one plus one, and it was changed to plus one minus one late to weaken the card, which did exactly the opposite. But as it turns out, this version is still quite good. A favorite moment from the weekend, seeing a player control both Skull Clamp and original Skull Clamp at the same time. Yeah, that's good. Okay, here are two of the deepest cuts in the set, Goblin Savant and Glorious Dragonkin. What do these have to do with each other at all? Well, in the Invitational that Jens Thorin won, the one where he made Psalms and Malacrum, Chris Bakula and Brian Kibler both submitted cards as well. They didn't win the Invitational, so their cards didn't get made. But I imagine them here as if they had won and got the artifact treatment like Jens did. I knew both Chris and Brian would be at the event that weekend, so this is my little tribute. To them. Oil Skellion tries out another play on oil counters, Oil Sunburst. It's a reference to Triskelion, though it's not a 0-0 like Triskelion is. All the way back in M15, we got Soul of New Phyrexia. Fair enough, but what about Soul of Mirrodin? This imagines what that card could have been. It's a spirit here, breaking from the original cycle, because presumably the Soul of Mirrodin here is dead. Rest in peace. Platinum Persecutor, aka the standoff in Philadelphia, is a card that I've tried in multiple sets and I doubt will ever make, but seemed right to do here as a Platinum Angel Riff, combined with Abyssal Persecutor, of course. Chancellor of the Mulligan is a take on a new member of the Chancellor Cycle from New Phyrexia. I truly don't know how I came up with the idea that mulliganing would be his thing, but I just ran with it. Telling somebody to take a mulligan in the middle of the game tickled me. Mindslaver Toolkit is a reference to Mindslaver, the perfect card to combo with it. People kept asking me if they were misreading it, and the answer was nope. I wish Mindslaver was in the Mystery Booster set somewhere so you could pull off the combo, but alas. In every one of these sets, I kind of like one intentionally really bad card, just because it gets people laughing at how bad it is, not unlike one with death in Mystery Booster, which has many fans. But is this actually worth doing? Maybe not. And maybe I should have cut it in retrospect. What do you think? Mox Poison is straightforward. What if there was a Mox that gave you poison counters. I heard widely ranging opinions on this in All Will Be One Limited, from incredible to unplayable. What do you think? Sword of Blank and Blank is a bit of a wild one. I knew I wanted to do a build your own Mirrodin sword joke, and this name seemed perfect, but getting the effect right was hard. Originally, you just got to pick it when you played it or in deck building, like the Mystery Booster Legacy mechanic, but I realized that picking Mind on Sword of Body and Mind was the best thing to do by a long shot, so I randomized it. The judges even made up sheets with all nine swords and effects on them for people, so you could just roll a 10 and figure it out. It doesn't grant plus two plus two in protection because swords are so good and limited and a lot of people were going to have these. And as it turns out, a lot of people played them and did great with them anyway. When I made Locust Cobra, I knew I wanted a locust in the set and that's where the forgotten place came from. It scales up like locusts do, but also cares about spheres. A little combination there. Artifact Unknown Shores is exactly what it sounds like on the tin. I knew I'd want a bit of mana fixing and I thought I'd name this card just like how we often do in game design. It's time for everybody's favorite game show. Who's that? Praetor. This card is a delight to me. I knew I wanted it to make one of the five Praetors, but given that you're likely to roll a six-sided dice, what to do for the last one? Eben Praetor. Of course, one of my favorite moments was watching someone sacrifice their Elish Norn that was locked down to their Eben Praetor on their way to winning the game. And finally, call up Emrakul for help. I'm sure nothing can go wrong doing that, right? Now, 
Those are all the cards players could open, but there are two more to cover, prize cards, Phila and Delphia. At the end of the event, you got the card for that event, and its effect permanently changed depending on which team won. And while none of these cards are technically legal for play anywhere or really exist in Magic, if you have one and build a commander deck around it and want to play, I'm not going to tell you now. So who won? Well, on the first night, the Mirans took it down narrowly with a final score of 445 to 431. That means Phila is going to have this first text. And in the second one, the Phyrexians turned the tables and took it down. Looks like Delphia will be giving Phyrexian friends plenty to build around there. This was a super unique experience and people had a blast. Will it happen again? Well, there's another unknown event happening at Magicon Minneapolis. What is it? Will it be this kind of thing again, but with different cards? You'll just have to come out and see. So what do you think? Which card was your favorite? Which would you like to see as a real card? Let me know in the comments down below. I'll talk with you again soon. And until then, may you have fun journeying into the unknown. You got this. Take Boom Bust as an example. You can cast Boom targeting your fetch land and their regular land. All targets legal, but then in response to casting the spell, you can sacrifice your fetch land to get a new land. Boom goes to resolve, and even though one of its original targets is gone, its other original target, your opponent's land, is still